8th grade math. Test 16 study guide. Problem number 1 says round rad 204 to the nearest whole number. Well, 204 is in between these two perfect squares. 14 times 14 is 196. 15 times 15 is 225. So it's in between 14 and 15. But if I subtract 204 and 196, I get a difference of 8. 225 minus 204 is a difference of 21. I see that um, this is actually closer to 196, which means that it's closer to 14, so it's about 14. For number 2, it says we're going to decide which expression is equivalent to this. So for number 2, <coughs> I'm going to do the inside first. So 4 to the negative second times 4 to the first is... 4 to the negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So I add those exponents. Now I'm going to do the two uh, exponents on the outside. That's what I multiply. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And if I write this more simplified, negative exponent means flip it upside down. Now it's a positive exponent. And 4 times 4 is 16. So if I look at my other expressions, expression 1, I copy that 4 and I add 14 and negative 16. That's negative 2. That's the same. 2. When I have 4 to the 10th over 4 to the 8th, I copy the base and subtract the exponents. 10 take away 8 is 2. Well, that's not the same as negative 2. 3. I do the top first. 4 squared times 4 to the negative 3rd. That's when I add the exponents, just like I did in here. Negative 2 plus negative 3. Uh, I'm sorry, positive 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Over 4, and that's 4 to the 1st. And when I'm dividing like I did up here, I copy the base and subtract. Negative 1 minus positive 1. Negative 1 minus positive 1 is negative 2. So that worked. And example 4 uh, is 16. Well, it's the same as 1 over 16, not 16. So the answer is uh, expressions 1 and 3. Problem number uh, 3. <clears throat> we had to multiply these two numbers, so I multiply the coefficients. 7 times 1.2 is 8.4. 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 4th, just like I did over here. I copy the base and add those two. 8 plus negative 4 is positive 4, and that's already in scientific notation. Number 4, it says how many times bigger, so I divide. Put the bigger one on top. Bigger means bigger uh, exponent, right? 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 10 to the 8th divided by 10 squared is, copy the base, subtract the two exponents, 10 to the second power. Number five says, find the value of x that makes this true. In other words, solve this. So if I do the rule for subtraction first, I do it here, add the opposite, draw two sticks, draw two sticks there, now I distribute. Distributing combined like terms is how we simplify. So we simplify first. Half of 4x is 2x, half of negative 6 is negative 3. Combine my 2x's, 2x and 3x is 5x. Combine negative 3 and negative 4, negative 3 plus negative 4 is negative 7. Add 7 from both sides because now I'm isolating the variable. I work farthest away from the variable first. Opposite of negative 7 is to add 7. And the last thing we do is divide. And I see that my solution is x equals negative 3. Number 6, when you're going to pick how many solutions there are, uh, infinitely many solutions means you're going to have the same coefficient and the same constant. So what we're going to do is simplify all these. So equation 1 uh, the left side is already simplified. The right side I have to distribute a negative. Negative times 2x is negative 2x. Negative times 4 is negative 4. And I see I have the same coefficients but different constants. That's no solution. That's not infinitely many. Next one, I can do the rule for subtraction first. So if I have minus 4, I go plus negative 4. If I have a minus sign outside parentheses, that's like distributing a negative 1. And if I have minus x, that's plus negative x. Now I can distribute. 8 times 2x is 16x. 8 times 1 is 8 over here. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 times negative x is positive x. Now I combine like terms. 8 and negative 4 are like terms. 8 and negative 4 equals 4 over here. x plus 2x is 3x. And I can stop because both sides are simplified. I see that my coefficients are different. Anytime my coefficients are different, that's one answer. So that's not infinitely many. So I don't pick 2 either. Next problem, number six, says pick all the equations. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, we're still, we're still on number six. Uh, we're doing equation three now, so we can, again, we can do the rule for subtraction. Over here I distributed 8 times x is 8x, 
8 times 5 is 40. Combine like terms. Constants are like terms. I add 50 and negative 10 to get 40 plus 6x. Over here I add my x's. Negative 2x plus 8x is 6x. Right? Opposite teams subtract. There's more positives than negatives. I see that my coefficients are the same. My constants are the same. I can stop right there and say that has infinitely many solutions because I have the same coefficients and same constants. Number four, I'm going to simplify. I'm going to do the rule for subtraction first. Minus four is the same as plus negative four. Uh, when you have a negative sign outside of parentheses, that's like distributing a negative one. And minus is plus negative. I distribute a seven. Seven times x minus four is seven x minus or uh, minus twenty-eight or plus negative twenty-eight. So this times this is negative twenty-eight. And then copy the plus ten. Over here, negative one times eighteen is negative eighteen. Negative one times negative seven is negative seven. Uh, excuse me. Negative one times negative seven x is positive seven x. Combine my like terms now. Combine my two constants, I get negative 18. And I can stop because I simplified both sides. I have the same coefficients, same two constants. That is infinitely many solutions. Equations 3 and 4 had infinitely many solutions. For number 7, we're going to simplify the left side first. If I have uh, x plus a negative x and two more negative x's, well, those two cross cancel out, don't they? So I have negative 2x left plus 10. Now on this side, I can plug the numbers in. They said, what if you put a 3 in the first one and a 2 in the second box? So now I can compare. I have different coefficients. That means there's going to be one solution. Different coefficients means one solution always. For number 8, we have a graph. So I'm going to take two points on the graph that are on the lattices. So I see this point here at 0, 1, and there's another point over here at 1, 5. So to get from 0, 1 to 1, 5, I have to go up 4 and over 1. I rise 4 and I run 1, and I see that it is a positive slope. So that's a slope of 4. I'm going to look at the other relations to see which of those have the same slope. So relation 1, they give me a table. So what I do with that table is I take two points from that table, any two, it doesn't matter which two, and I find my slope. I go y minus y over x minus x, and I get, when I reduce that, a slope of 1 half. Remember, factor trees cross out your ones. Now, if you see that that's proportional because of 0, 0, you could have simply put just y over x, and you'd, you'd get the same thing. Okay? Not everyone sees that, though, so that's why I'm not taking the shortcut there. Uh, relation 2. Where am I here? Relation 2. So they say a line contains these two points. So the difference is they just give us two points, so we have to use those two points they gave us. I don't get a pick. Again, I go y minus y over x minus x. Notice that I started on the right side this time to avoid a negative. But if I do that, I have to start on the right side over here also. Okay, because sometimes I do that and the bottom's negative still. Just make sure you keep the same order. Right minus left over right minus left. Or left minus right over left minus right. Same order. So I get a slope of 4. That's the same. Relation 3. Relation 3 is an equation in slope intercept form. So the slope is whatever's in front of x. The slope is 4. Relation 4, they give me a table, so I pick two coordinates. I pick the first one, 7, 14, and over here, 0, 0. Again, if you see the shortcut, take it. If you don't see the shortcut, this is what you do. y minus y over x minus x. 14 over 7 is 2. Slope is 2. The only two that have the same slope as a graph is relation 1 and 2. Excuse me. Sorry, 2 and 3. Sorry about that. Well, all right. Next one. Number 9. So it looks like we have an equation. We have to see which ordered pairs are solutions to that equation. So for number 9, let me bring this down a little bit so you can see a little better. So for number 9, y equals 1 third x plus 9. So I'm going to test that first point. This is x and this is y. I put them into the equation. I put the y where the y goes and the x where the x goes. That looks like this for the first one. 1 third times negative 3. Make that a fraction. Cross out your 1's. 1 third of negative 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 9 does not equal 7, so that is not on the line. That's not a solution. Pair 2, 3, 10. 3, 10. I plug the 10 in here, the 3 here. 1 third of 3 is 1. 1 plus 9 is 10. That worked out. So this is on the line. So I'm just plugging them in and checking. This point here, put the y where the y goes, the x here. 0 times anything is 0. That checked out. That's on the line. And number 4, when I put the y here and the x here, 1 third of 6 or 6 divided by 3 is 2. That doesn't check out. So only pairs 2 and 3 worked out. For number 10, they give us a table. 
And if I look at that table and I see that my X's are in order, and I see that these are going up or down by the same thing every time, that's a line, and that has a slope. So it goes. It, what happens here is it goes up 0.5 every time. So my slope is 0.5 or one half. Okay, you got to know both, either fraction or decimal. Sometimes they give you one or the other. Now, if I work backwards and I go up to where x is zero, in other words, I take away 0.5 to get up to zero, I get my y-intercept, and there's my equation. For number 11, number uh, 11. They give us an equation. They want us. Uh, excuse me. They give us a, a graph. They want us to find the equation. Well, I see it hits here at two, and to get from one point to the other, I go down one and over one. That's a slope of negative one. The y-intercept it hits the y-axis at two. The equation is y equals negative one x plus two. Now number twelve. Number twelve says, is this always, sometimes, or never true? So they say if the lines have the same slope, they do not intersect. Well, that's true but not all the time because sometimes they have the same slope and the same y-intercept. In other words, the two lines are in the same spot. Those guys in, uh, intersect infinitely many times, so this is only sometimes true. So for number 13, they say uh, we're going to solve this system. So I see this doesn't have a coefficient, so I'm going to isolate this y, right? I subtract 3x from both sides, and I get my equation. Now I'm going to substitute this part into the other equation. So I'm going to take the other equation and we'll see where the y is. I'm going to put that in for y because y equals that. So I rewrite the other equation, but instead of putting y, I put this stuff. And then I do my rule for subtraction and distribute. 2 times negative 3x is negative 6x. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. I'm going to combine like terms next. Negative 8 and negative 6 is negative 14. There are x's though. And now I can isolate do the inverse operation of minus 14, and then I divide both sides by negative 14, the coefficient, and I get x is negative 2. This problem here, they said, what's the x-coordinate, not the whole thing? So I can stop there, because I already found the x. x is negative 2. All right. So uh, next one. Number 14 says we're going to select which statement is true about the solution. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to start to solve this. So it's already ready to substitute, right? The y is isolated, so I plug this into the other one where the y goes. Do my rule for subtraction. Now I'm going to distribute negative 3 times 3x and negative 3 times negative 17. Negative times negative is positive. 3 times 17 is 51. Combine my like terms, my x's cancel out. This is true. That's infinitely many solutions. Number 15, I'm going to solve the system. Both y's are already isolated. So when that happens, I can set this equal to this with no x's in there. Get my variables on the same side. And 7x take away x, right, because I want to get rid of it on this side, so I do the opposite of positive x. Now I work farthest away from the variable, add 3 to both sides, divide by 6, and I see that x is 1. So now that I have my 1, I can plug it into here or here. Either one, they're both going to work. They're both going to give me the same answer. The solution is 1, 4. Number 16, we have uh, skydiving. Well, when they use the word each, that's going to tell you it's a slope. And they tell you find the number of dives. So that's why x equals dives. x equals what's missing. So the Adam's cost is going to be this much money plus 125 per dive. That means 125x. The Carlos, there's, not, there's no uh, initiation fee, but it's $200 per dive. So when are they the same? I write them equal to each other. I say, when does this equal this? I put them equal to each other. Get my x's on the same side. So isolate the variable, and I find out they'll be the same after 25 dives. 17, we're going to write the equation. So take two points from this uh, table that they gave me. And the two points I used are 0, 0, and... 1 and 2 tenths, and I just do y minus y over x minus x, and I get a slope of 0.2 or 2 tenths, which I could write that as a fraction, except they don't do that in the answers. They give it as a decimal this time, so that's why I used a decimal this time of a fraction. Next problem, number 18, it says use the equation from the previous problem, and they say, what's your output if your input's 8? So I take the equation that I got from the last one, and by the way, since n, since n goes where the y goes, that's why this is y equals mx. Uh, so remember, um, 
x's go first. So where our x normally goes, we put the m there. And where our y normally goes, we put the n there because of the order on the table. So my input, inputs are x's. So I put the 8 where the x would normally go, but I'm using m this time instead of x. And I multiply to get my answer. And for 19, they say, what's the domain and range? All i got to do over here is look at all my x's. I have a 5, a 0, a negative 4, and an 8. And I just write those in order from least to greatest. Same thing for the range, but I look at my y's. I have a 4, a 6, a 9, and another 9. But remember, you don't repeat anything, and you put them in order from least to greatest. And that's how you do that problem. And the last problem, is it, is it a function? Well, none of my x's repeat, so it is a function. Hope that helped.